welcome to the Autumn Acorn Knits podcast. My name is Judy. This is a podcast mostly about knitting, sometimes crocheting, yarn dyeing, um, embroidery, and whatever else I'm doing around the log cabin. I live here in our log cabin with my husband Joe and our black cat Meryl. Uh, we live in the foothills of the White Mountains of New Hampshire in a very rural and snowy area, as you may be able to see from the window. Um, I reorganized my craft space, and so now I have this wonderful yarn organizer up in my loft that I filled with every single skein of yarn that I own, as well as every single skein of yarn that's for sale. So as it may look like a, a lot, it is a lot. It's more than I should have, um, but a lot of it is for sale. So that does make me feel better. Um, I want to try to use up only the yarn that I have and not buy more unless it's absolutely necessary, like for a design or something. But otherwise, I really want to focus on using what I have and going through this enormous stash before next winter. So we'll see how I do. Um, as a lot of you may know, you've been watching my weekly vlogs. It's uh, just something that I've been trying to do um, in order to record and upload more frequently. So I hope you like that format. I also realized that some Sorry, I am getting used to a remote for my camera and I just fiddled with it and hit it, so I turned it off. Mm. I realized that some of you prefer the long form format of podcasting that I do or have always done, and I do want to try to keep those up as well, maybe one a, one a month and then three shorter 10 to 15 minute vlogs to keep you up on what's going on around here. But I thought today would be a good day to do a regular long format show because Joe is out plowing. We got a lot more snow recently and he, we live on a private road that he's responsible for maintaining. So that's quite a big job for him. Let's get right into finished objects. So this, I don't even consider it and it doesn't, truly count as a finished object because this is something I started a couple of years ago when I started podcasting I started this this is a hydrangea stripes um, scrappy blanket from scraps of yarn and minis but I had never really finished it and I decided that it was time to put a border on it so I found this really beautiful uh, green variegated yarn that I had dyed up a while back and I thought it was the perfect complement to this big bouncy blanket. Um, this is the width and it's folded in half so you could imagine. Well, let me try. It's never easy to do this, is it? I love this thing. It is so cozy and springy, as in like bouncy springy. It wraps around me perfectly. It is carefree. I mean, I haven't seen a single pill on this thing since I made it. And like I said, this thing was finished a while ago, over a year ago, but now it's completely finished. So I'm super happy with it. And I consider this my hydrangea stripes blanket in the more um in darker colors or brighter colors even but just kind of like darker compared to the one that i'm working on now which i consider to be lighter shades but not all of them there are some that are dark this one i started i want to say i'm not really good at this but probably three weeks ago or so I don't think I had, st maybe I'd started it when I last did a normal podcast format. So that might've been when I started it. That makes the most sense, um, but it doesn't matter. 
it is coming along really well. I left off in the middle of a row. But here is the lighter version, although when I look at it on screen, so it turned off again. <laughs> That's okay. I'm not going to use the remote. I'm not obviously not qualified to use a remote yet. I'm too fidgety. Where were we? Finished objects. Um, this is not an object that I finished. So we're going to consider this is more of an acquisition. Uh, but this was some yarn that I had um, dyed for the advent calendar. So the final skein of the advent calendar. And my dear friend Cindy uh, graciously offered to knit me a shawl with that yarn. And so I sent her the, um, it's called, this is a tough name, but I'll put it down here. But it is the blue the Blut, Blutenzauber Shawl by Annika Andrea Wolk. I always want to call it Blutenzauber, but it's the Blutenzauber Shawl. And it's so beautiful. Let me show you how pretty that turned out. So it's more like a scarf. I would consider it more like a scarf. Um, we did have to leave off quite a bit of the ribbing because Cindy had run out of yarn. I sent her two skeins, but it really needed two and a half or so. So anyway, it is very long and very beautiful. And I think it's going to be the perfect thing to wear uh, this spring because, well, mainly the colors. The colors are very, very springy and beautiful. Cindy is an amazing knitter. Yeah, this is a work of art, if you ask me, and I'm so grateful to have it. So I highly recommend it. That's a, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Uh, the, it actually calls for uh, Jameson's of Shetland, as far as the yarn. Um, this is just a sock yarn. So my other friend, Carol, was kind enough to offer to knit me the uh, magic toadstool mitts because I just I tried three times and I could not get the color work loose enough it was way too tight and I couldn't get the gloves on and it was frustrating and I just realized that I'm not ready to do color work with fingering weight yarn yet I'm not there so she made them for me and they're just adorable I love them I mean, who doesn't love a toadstool, first of all, but they're perfect because they're thin. I can still knit with these or really do many things with them. I only have had heavyweight fingerless mitts and they're a lot harder to do anything with. They keep your hands warm, but so these are perfect for my Raynaud's syndrome or Raynaud's disease, which turns my fingertips and toes white and very, very painful. So this is it's a good solution because I can use these under mittens. Oh, that reminds me, I'll be back. She also sent me a pair of beautiful mittens. Okay, okay so these beautiful felted mittens with suede were a complete surprise. I had no idea that Carol was knitting these for me, but she knows I have Raynaud's. She knows I live in the cold north and she sent, made me these and sent them, and they're perfect. Uh, Joe got the tractor stuck the other day in a ditch, and I put these on and went to the rescue to try to help him. And um, they kept my hands super warm, but I can wear my fingerless mitts easily <clears throat> underneath these, easily. They just go on so quickly, so perfect solution. And this pattern is by Charlotte of Stone Knits. She has a lot of cute patterns. I also bought her, um, I can't remember the name of it, but they're flowers. I want to say, are they lilacs? Some sort of beautiful flower um, on a sock. So if anybody wants to <laughs> have a go at those for me, I'll send you the yarn. But I will not attempt to do color work socks because of my history. So I'm not ready to even try it, but 
I have the yarn already in the pattern I'll purchased. So let me know. And then she surprised me with this adorable squirrel. I don't know what the name of the pattern is. I will have to ask Carol. I don't know why I haven't thought to do that, but I haven't. Uh, it's the most adorable little guy. Look at him. I put a acorn so he could hold a little acorn, but look at his face. Look at that tail. It's fluffy and it's it has mohair in it and it's perfect. And he stands up on my desk and keeps me company. And I just, <laughs> what's not to love about a squirrel? Joe always calls me a squirrel. So I'm doing a million things at once, but oh my God, especially the gray squirrel. Like growing up in New England, this is, this is our squirrel, the gray squirrel. I have a hat that I'm making a friend a male friend, Pat. I don't think Pat watches the podcast, but he does watch a different podcast. Um, I, I think it's like a wilderness survival podcast. And there's a, the host on there calls himself Shug. And so Pat has asked me for two years to please make him a Shug hat. That's what he calls it. There's no pattern or anything. It's just and so he wanted the Shug hat to look just like Shug's. And uh, he wanted it made out of let lopi yarn in the colors gray for the main color and then like an olive green or forest green for the trees. So I've been trying. I've been trying. I came up with a tree motif that I was going to use. And then this just came off of like a free color work thing and then try to incorporate it into just a made up hat pattern. And this is what I have so far. Um, you can't see much, but you, I mean, you can get an idea of the contrast for the two colors, but it's, yeah. So I just, so far I did two, two thin, thin line stripes of the gray and then I started the color work. I have no idea if the numbers are gonna turn out right. I'm a little bit concerned. Um, I tried to find a good guy's hat pattern. He wanted it to be a beanie, not a watchman's cap style. He wanted the true beanie style. And I tried to find something on, on a Ravelry and I just couldn't. Uh, and this needle isn't doing really well right now. So I'm going to get that on a new needle. Take another break. All right. I am back to tell you what I'm working on next and this one is a doozy this is the yarn the wool roving that i got from australia beginning of it and i've decided today it's going to be a rug because i laid it out on the ground and i stepped on it and it was like the squishiest thing ever and i never uh come upstairs with my shoes on so it's not like it's going to get dirty so what I'm doing is I'm just crocheting it so and by my hand. So I'm just pulling up one loop, putting the two loops together, and then pulling it through the last loop. And that forms the stitch. So I pull through. I have two in my hand now. And I put the loop through those two. And then I have one. So I put uh, this string through the hole and I have two and I put this through the hole again and then I have one and so I just keep going across like that and it's really quite easy. I tried using knitting needles. They weren't big enough. Um, the PVC pipes were too big. Uh, I tried using this crochet hook which is a 50 mil. 25 mil. It's a US 50, 25 millimeter. And that worked okay, but it was a little too tight. So rather than buy something new, I just thought I would give it a go with my hands again. Um, I had tried arm knitting and I wasn't really good at it, but this arm crocheting seems to be really doable. And I'm happy with the um, fabric I'm getting. It's not too dense. It's not too loose um like you'd want for a blanket it's better it's it's a little more appropriate for a rug 
So, yeah, I think this is called, and I'll put the information in the show notes on this particular fiber, but it is a unspun roving wool from Australian sheep that has been put through a process, a natural process, but I mean, a machine process, but without um, chemicals, still, it is still a pure wool. And they're able to make it so that it doesn't pill or felt or, you know, it, it'll be, it's long, very, very long lasting. <clears throat> so it costs a lot more than it would be if it was the type that pills real easily and phrase, but this stuff is solid. It is supposed to last a lifetime. So I think that, and I still have quite a bit left on this. I don't even remember what size bump this is now. It's been so long since I bought it, but I am determined by the next time I podcast that this will be finished. Um, I may even finish it today. That's how determ determined I am right now to get this done and to be used instead of draped over the banister because it's not doing any good there. So another work in progress. I am working on a new design. Um, I've already named it. I usually don't name my designs until they're finished, but this one just came to me that it had to be called the Frost Fairy Jacket because it's a lot thicker than a cardigan or a sweater. It's more coat-like and it'll be perfect for wearing outside on cold days. So I'm using piece fleece wool, piece fleece file, there's the ball band, and the color is Antarctic white, and it is a worsted weight wool yarn. Very, very wooly. I would show you a skein, but I have run out, so I have gone through, knit through four Hanks, and I have one more coming to me in the mail. It should be here today, so I can finish this up. It's a shame because the only thing that I had left to do was the collar, but I ran out of yarn, so it is what it is. This is the size medium. I'm not gonna show you everything yet until it's finished, but I can give you an idea of the beautiful texture there's the bottom of the sweater. There's part of it and the top. Um, here are the raglan increases. I made a pretty design out of that. And of course it's on both sides. Um, show you, I believe these are size seven. I'm using my Knit Pro or Knitter's Pride rather needles, interchangeables. Deciding on which button, I think I, I think it's just going to have one button, but I'm not positive yet. It might have more, but I'm thinking about either this button, which I just picked up a few weeks ago as a, as a handmade button, or this style. I think this would look really good on it as well, so I'm still deciding on that. Big and squishy and I will show you more when that's ready for test knitting. It's going to be soon though so if you're interested in a worsted weight, um, oversized sort of bulky jacket with some texture. Uh, I said raglan um, so it is all in one piece then please reach out to me and um, I have it in a medium. I'm going to need it <clears throat> in a small, a large, extra large, etc. So yeah, definitely need some test knitters for that project. It's been super fun, super quick because of the uh, weight of the yarn and just really enjoyable. By the way, Peace Fleece yarn smells so sheepy. It's probably the sheepiest smelling yarn that I've ever used and the price is really reasonable. So. It's a good, it's a good value. I'm also working on a um, other project.
project, which I haven't gotten very far on yet because of designs always have to come first. But I got my January knit crate and you may have seen this on my blog, but the yarn was gorgeous. Here's one of the balls. I love anything in fall colors. And then this was the coordinating skein. And the project for this month's box was a really pretty cowl that I wanted to make called the Upside Down Cowl. And it's really beautiful. It's a lot of texture, a lot of um, playing around with the color. And I just think it looks amazing. This was the ball band. This yarn is from Brooklyn Boy Knits. And it's a worsted colorway it is Concrete Jungle on this one. Um, the other one is, um, colorway is Bushwick. Oh boy, that was great. <laughs> Bushwick. So, this is all I have done so far. You're not going to be very impressed. Um, I got this beautiful, um, progress keeper. Uh, no, stitch marker from Knit Crate as well. I don't know if you could see that. It's a beautiful little lamp work bead. But yeah, this is all I have so far. But I'm loving the texture. Yeah. Oh, and this started out with a um, I-cord cast on. Can you see how beautiful and neat that makes the edge? It makes a huge difference, and I'm always going to use it now for everything, if I, if possible. So stay tuned for the Upside Down Cowl in two colors. And if you're interested in um, signing up for Knit Crate, I am an affiliate. So I do get a small percentage of your purchase. But if you would like to order your own subscription, just use the link in the show notes. I'd be really, really grateful for you for that. Oh, that's right. I have another work in progress. Um, let me grab it. I'm working on a secret project for my middle daughter who is due to have a baby in April, the beginning of April. So I thought it would be nice for her to have a bubbling brook shawl. So another one of my designs as a, um, a nursing shield. So I chose some natural colors that I had dyed up using walnut. And let's see if I can get this out. This is in my cute little, I don't even know what you'd call it. It's like an envelope style bag that um, I bought some years ago made of burlap. It's made in the USA. It's a really nice bag. Piece. Okay, so this is what I have so far. And hopefully you can see that pretty well. It actually starts up here. So this is where I'm at. This is just to mark my center point where um, the increases are. And then of course I have increases on either side. And I decided on this version, my original version had, didn't have the double row of popcorn balls things. And I decided I thought it looked really pretty with the two. So you can alter or modify or adjust this pattern pretty quickly. It's not that difficult to do. Um, especially with crochet, I find you can make modifications pretty easily. So, yep, it starts at the top and once it's finished, of course, you would wear it more like this. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with the colors. I think it'll match pretty much everything once it's big enough. So I think she's going to love this. And I think the fact that it has the airy holes in it are perfect for um, nursing a baby. So baby can breathe. 
So that is the Bubbling Brook Shawl, and it is available <clears throat> in my web shop and on Ravelry if you're interested. It uses fingering weight yarn, but you could use anything. If you wanted it bigger, you could use Sport DK, which is a yarn that is by Pearl Soho. And I got this as a gift last year at Squam, at the Squam Retreat. So this is called Linen Quill. Another inexpensive yarn, but just beautiful. It's 50% um, Highland wool, 35% alpaca, and 15% linen. And it's, it's an amazing yarn. It feels so incredible. So yeah, I took um, that and then, like I said, mixed it with this regular um, fingering weight sock yarn. And then I'm also throwing in some other uh, minis that I picked up at the uh, Squam. They give you so many nice free things when you go. Uh, so I'm going to add this one to it, which is an organic <clears throat> cotton mini. And then this one as well, this color, sand. And that's also an organic cotton. I think she'll love it. I'm trying to put together a care package for her. She's had a really tough pregnancy. Um, and she is having a C-section, so I think she's going to need something, some pampering when she's, when she has the baby. Have I showed you this cowl yet that I made? It is something I made, gosh, probably, I guess last year. And it's a whole bunch of squares sewn together. So I knit a bunch of well, they're really rectangles. I knit a bunch of rectangles using my hand-dyed yarn and mohair. And then I um, put them all together. I sewed them all together. And then I picked up the stitches and added on the second layer. So it's two, you know, two layer. It's a tube that's closed up. So one side has just this naturally dyed tan color and then the other side are all the um the rectangles and I think it turned out really pretty uh it's not a pattern that I wrote down or anything it was just for fun but I started this last year at Squam I had a bunch of I was just brought a bunch of squares because I figured it would be easier to focus on knitting squares than a pattern and this is what I came up with I think it's really pretty it's definitely warm I like that it wraps around twice. So perfect. I ran out of yarn for a project, another project that I'm working on. So I had to order some more from Fancy Tiger Crafts. And I think it was like that the shipping would be 650 no matter what. So I figured I'd better buy, pick up something else to make that shipping worth it. So I got some beautiful linen fabric, one yard. It's such a nice quality. It's really sturdy, but not stiff. And I don't know what I'm going to make with it yet, but probably it'll end up being something embroidered. Um, I love embroidering on linen. Yeah, I mean, we're just back down to the part where I chatter. So I wanted to talk about uh, bread making, sourdough bread making. I have been trying to perfect it for the last few weeks. And I've made three loaves plus a pizza dough. The first loaf came out really good, but it wasn't cooked quite long enough. So it was a little bit doughy in the middle. The second loaf came out really good. And that was more of a free form sort of loaf, just stuck it on a sheet pan. And that came out really delicious. Um, the pizza dough was delicious and then just yesterday I made my best loaf so far. It's a big one. It's like this big. I did it the freeform way again just on a sheet pan. that gives you the most crust and I, I just think it works out 
and it was so good. So Holly saw on Instagram, she's a friend on Instagram that I ha I reached out to her and said, I've never had luck with it. I tried to um, start my own sourdough starter and then I tried to buy some sourdough start. I bought some and it didn't, it just didn't take off. So she offered to send me some and she did. In January, she sent me a good portion of her sourdough starter. She lives in Massachusetts. So she uh, sent me videos of all the different steps and it was so helpful. And she kind of walked me through it one day and we, uh, well, it took two days, I think. And we, um, she helped me make my first successful loaf. So thank you so much, Holly. I am loving the way it tastes and Joe is loving it too. So, and it's actually better for you than traditional bread. Something about the fermentation of the sourdough um, reduces the effect of the gluten or keeps, results in less gluten and it's better for your digestive system. So really happy about that. Um, other than that, there's not much else going on around here. It's just really cold and snowy and beautiful. I've been really busy with um, working. So I am planning on coming up with some new ideas for the Automacorn yarns. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to be offering a brand new product soon. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, if you enjoyed the show, I hope that you will like this video and subscribe to the podcast so you can get notifications um, every time I put out a new vlog episode or a podcast episode. But um, I hope you have a really good rest of the day and I will talk to you next time. Bye now.